Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the L1 show. Today is November 1st. Prepare now for Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. And uh, we're doing government and social news. How do you prepare for Thanksgiving? Like, did you drink a lot? Get your meat now. <laughs> Last year, we were so worried about shortages. My mom had me buy ham for Christmas at the beginning of November. And then stale, it was fine. Stale Christmas ham. Well, it was frozen, but. Well. Chickens or turkeys and ham have nothing to do with Google. They're coming and home to roost. Ah, turkeys ah, coming ah, home to roost. Ah. Do turkeys roost? <laughs> they definitely make a mess. Well, they mm. seem to just kind of wander around near the grocery store here. Any turkey experts in the audience? But this is about Google. And uh, a while back, you remember BTCE? They had a little issue, or maybe it was a big issue. It was a big issue. And uh, Google was supposed to hand over all of the data about BTCE. There was a problem. Google settles with DOJ over lost criminal crypto exchange data. If you're from the European Union, you should read this because Google initially didn't give them everything because not everything was stored on US servers. Of course, Google gave the DOJ everything to do with BTCE that was stored in the cloud, but uh, only if it was located on servers that were physically in the US of A. So Congress passed the Cloud Act, which is what this article is about a little bit, and that clarifies that no matter where it's stored, Google has to hand over the data, even if it wouldn't be legal for them to do so in other countries. It doesn't matter. America number one. But the wild thing is Google is now saying, I'm sorry, we lost it. What? Google, there's data that Google didn't manage to retain? Has yeah. that ever happened before? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because it expired. Like the server, the data that was not on US servers is gone now because whatever. I don't believe that. I yeah. also don't believe that. Do you think they would say that to an advertiser? Oh, we lost your data after three months. I think they would threaten to delete the data unless they got money. I don't know if I actually would. No, it's valuable AI training data. Mm. How to train AI to target crypto bros. Why give that up? Here's one that I thought we had seen an end to this. I thought there was some sort of amnesty, but apparently not because the FAA is still banging this drum. The FAA warns of aviation safety risks without US mandate on 5G limits. So apparently companies with 5G are running amok, even though in a lot of places when your phone says 5G, you don't, you're not actually getting 5G. They just changed the software to report 5G, which is really shady. Also the airports and some of the telecom companies came to some kind of business agreement, I guess, because the government wasn't involved. And they were like, okay, we'll do this and we'll keep it. But now the FAA is saying that that's not enough. Still a problem, still a danger. Maybe they thought like they needed to get it done before 5G took over the world, and then 5G was kind of a popcorn fart. Mm. And mm. I was like, well, we'll just wait. A popcorn fart, it's a technical term. Supposedly, some of the 5G frequencies interfere with aviation stuff, but if you look up popcorn fart in the dictionary, it's like um, uh, 3D TV, uh, 3D printing. <laughs> 5G, the full metaverse. self driving, the whole metaverse, yeah, <laughs> all of the metaverse, not just a little piece of it. Full self, full self driving is not a popcorn fart. It's out there. It's just dangerous and no. bad. Oh man, I can't wait to the business section that we talk about the implosion of the meta, but that's okay. That'll be the social media section, <laughs> which is actually in this episode today. Oh, oh I, wanted to, I wanted to get the big meta and Twitter news yeah. and Monday. You got to hook them. Right? <laughs> get the hook in these fish. <clears throat> Well, this one is, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's not surprising, but it was a little blatant. <laughs> I mean, you got the, 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 you think these guys were confident that they wouldn't get caught? Yes. It seems a little ham fisted. Well, well, here, read the headline. Uh, alleged Chinese spies charged with trying to recruit assets and obstruct U.S. Huawei investigation. So this article said there were five, and then it mentioned two weren't arrested. Is they, that normal? They so might not be here. Oh, uh, well, they kind of implied that they were. Is that, is that normal to just not arrest spies? Like they, they might still be using them. Uh, there, there is that weird situation where if you register with the State Department as a spy, as long as you don't do anything illegal, that's okay. So, like, you could ask people things. It's like, so how's it going? Yeah, oh, no, I'm friends with somebody that works there. We're just friends. Uh, is that just supposed to be like if you're someone who's immigrating to a country? Like, oh, I retired. I'm not a spy anymore, but I have to disclose it. Maybe is that a use case for? <laughs> I don't know. So these guys, they sort of like warmed them up first because this was a honeypot type situation. And then they they offered uh, one page, a one page document about 
the Huawei stuff, I gave them 41 grand for it. Uh -huh. Deep pockets. They're going to go to jail. And here's the thing about this story, because ultimately one of the things that came out of this, one of the punishments is that this company must never store data unless they can prove that it is absolutely necessary for them to do business. Why is that not a rule for everybody? <laughs> yeah. I mean, clearly it works. Clearly it's something we consider when this happens. Why not do it to everybody? It makes no sense. The FTC seeks to clamp down on alcohol delivery service Drizzly and its CEO after a data breach. Uh, the data breach they didn't disclose properly. Doesn't, doesn't Uber do alcohol delivery as well? Wouldn't this apply to them, you would think? You would think. Maybe they're trying to set a precedent and so they can go after bigger companies like Uber. Wait, didn't they, didn't they buy Drizzly? Oh, maybe. Did they? I thought I saw something about it. Maybe it was, yeah, Uber acquired last year. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that is Drizzly, what okay. you're talking about. I missed that. So yeah, they lost some data. They didn't deal with it well. That it wasn't recently though. I think it was back before Uber bought them maybe. Oh, that explains it. Cause they were talking about Drizzly in the present tense and I was like, what? Okay. But yeah, now they only can store what they absolutely need, which I guess they have to have your address and your name. You Probably your ID though too. Cause they want to make sure you're 21 here mm, in the States. Your phone number for notifications and stuff. Yeah. It's a pretty good <laughs> amount of data. Maybe a note on your file that's that has aggressive dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that you could say that about anybody. I mean, that's yeah. not like loud. Cat meows insufferably at front door. <laughs> that please, was an alcoholic. Please feed me. I <laughs> and you don't hear very much right now, and I suspect not for the next you know week or so. <laughs> not going to hear very much from our lovely government, but they did have a couple of easy wins for right before the election. More kids to ride on clean school buses, mostly electric. I'd be okay with light natural gas school buses. Diesel is filthy, but it doesn't have to be electric. It doesn't have to be electric. This is a net improvement for the bus stop. When you get on the bus, it smells so strongly of smoke. It's really just kind of a neutral change. Yeah, that was when you were in school. You think that's still true? Yeah, there's always kids, bad kids, smoking in the back of the bus. Oh, wow. Way to paint with a broad brush. Yeah. What I sat in the front of the bus because I was a good kid. What if there's like some future, you know, superhero that's on that bus smoking? Uh, one of one of the bus drivers that we had, Elvis, he was really good at when the really loud, annoying kids got off. He was able to accelerate the bus so that he could give the second gear a burst of diesel as it was passing just the, to like the problem kids. And there would always be a cloud of soot that, that enveloped those, those kids. It was great. Not Elvis Presley. <laughs> just, he, just clear that up. Elvis Presley's doppelganger. Elvis is cool. Our bus driver would always like fuss about, you know, don't you go back there and smoke. And he would have like a big thing of cigarettes <laughs> clearly visible in his shirt pocket. I was reading a thing how, um, in the big city to the north, not the not the one next to us, but the, the biggest city in Kentucky. Yeah. That's Louisville. Uh, <laughs> Good cover. They are having a, a terrible time staffing bus drivers because the kids are so out of control. That's true everywhere. And they're just like, I'm not doing this. And they can't. They don't pay well enough to even right. warrant. And they can't do anything about it. They're like, yeah, I write them up and I hand in those papers and nothing ever happens. Yeah. So I'm, I'm out. Yeah, that's true in literally like every county. The county and, that I'm from is having But there, it was creating massive delays. And look in the press release, they're like, we'll get them there eventually. And you know, the kids got to love that. Yeah. Well, it's that more time to smoke. That was true in uh, in Louisville many, many years ago as well. Because my husband used to have to take two buses to get to his school. We did that as well. Really? Yeah, we had, because, I mean, it was the, it was, it was, the per capita was so low. We were bused to one school where we could then board another bus to be bused to another school. Interesting. I didn't have to do that at mine. And the, the buses did double duty. The bus that was that would take us to the other school would drop off kids at the first school. So the times were weird. And you mixed the entire age groups all in one bus. And CRs also, didn't do that. They actually staggered the time so that way they wouldn't have to have like middle schoolers with elementary school kids. Probably in the ten years, the horrible lessons they learned in those first ten years. Yeah, like we're gonna stop, we'll stop doing that. that. Well, more and more we get in these stories and um, you never, we never actually learn anything concrete, No, but we just keep generating headline after headline. 
NASA announces a team of scientists who will study mysterious UFO events in the sky. I did some digging into this, and the credentials of the people, like, they seem not terrible. So it's not like Dr. Oz is going to study well, this. There was another story we did a while back where I looked up the guy, and he seemed also fairly legit. He wasn't just like a conspiracy theorist. So I was like, wow, that's interesting that we're getting more and more legit people looking into it. Yeah, I mean, can you can you imagine a committee that basically is is, you know, like Dr. Oz and then that guy that's got the daytime talk show and like Jerry Springer. It's like, how would you even accomplish anything? <laughs> the ancient aliens guy. I'll be, yeah. I'll be fine to replace almost anybody in government with Springer. <laughs> I think he would He'd probably get it done. Yeah. I don't know Would if it be more it or less white trash? It'd be entertaining. <laughs> so they did admit here that this is not, they're not going to necessarily study UFOs. They're going to study how to study UFOs. Neat. Meta. Very meta. Oh, well, they better not use that word. Mm. And Clearview AI, oh my God, are they horrible? <laughs> and here's the weird thing about it. They have admitted that they built their data set by just publicly stealing all of our information. They've admitted that they have enough data to cover 2 billion human beings. That's a lot of the earth. And in the EU, all of it's completely illegal, which tells you something about the US. <laughs> the French government hits Clearview with the maximum fine for GDPR violations. I have a feeling they're gonna have a problem collecting. Yeah, yeah they mentioned that. But if Clearview ever wants to try to put a data center or something over there, it's going to be an issue. As it should be. As it should be anywhere they try to put a data center. And yet. And we often find that when horrible leaks happen, when bad things happen, it is a third party. It's the supply chain. It's not us. We hired those people. <laughs> and I think it's time that, yes, you should be responsible for who you hire. Outsourcer InterServe fined 4.4 million pounds for failing to stop cyber attack. Good Lord. What was it? Uh, 113,000 employees. They got fished. They, there was like a, a bulletin in the internal software. Someone submitted a support ticket for an antivirus flag and no one followed up. Ooh. And then massive data breach afterward. Maybe take those Super. seriously. We have a new leader here in the UK. There's a lot of darkness there. I've been doing a lot of reading about that gentleman. Ooh, it's not good. <laughs> Guess what we're getting? Digital currency, for sure. And for whatever reason, we are going to remove some of the uh, things that the previous, I don't, well, actually it wasn't Johnson's iteration that did that, was it? There's been so many of them now. It was so rapid, I don't yeah. even remember. UK eyes scaling back the net neutrality rules for no coherent reason. So TechDirt has the write-up, and there really isn't a... It does seem like there's a shadow conspiracy here from ISPs to say, hey, we'd like to charge more for the same connection and the same data. I don't know how shadowy it is. <laughs> it's pretty blatant, yeah. It's interesting. They got this uh, paragraph in the italics here. We won't read it. It's kind of long. But the argument is kind of what uh, AT&T went with, which is like, well, we can't give special packages to poor people if you don't let us do whatever we want. So you're really, net neutrality is against the poors. That's not true. Mm. And also, there's no competition. They don't have any competition over there either, which yeah, is weird. It's, it's really just, we're going to see what the most creative way we can bill you is. Now, While this, also providing no extra value for our service. Yeah, we just want to charge you what we think we can get away with. We don't care if you like it. I Now, the previous one, I'm not sure. Is it Sunak? Sunak? Have you guys heard it? Pronounced. I've never heard it pronounced. I've only read mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I'm reading it as Sunak because that sounds vaguely like it would be from Star Trek. S Sunak the Magnificent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sunak. <laughs> but uh, I think his fingerprints are all over this one. Yeah. UK lawmakers vote to recognize crypto as a regulated financial instrument, which all of a sudden means that a lot of people have to carry, like, uh, obey a lot of rules. Here, for example, uh, there's been kind of a shadow campaign for people that were selling cryptocurrency on forums, just like individuals that were trading back and forth. <laughs> They've been investigated for criminal wrongdoing. Don't mess with the money. That's the number one rule. Well, it's not the number one rule, but it's up there. Quietly. And no one's really covering that. Shocking. And over in Australia, they have had, well, they had the big breach. What was the name of that company? P, sort of the P, right? 
Oh, yeah. Anyway, it was massive. And then just this week, another massive one, which we'll cover later. So they've sort of been forced into this. Australia to toughen privacy laws with a huge hike in penalties for breaches. Why? Because that ISP that offered the API that had no restrictions didn't technically violate any laws. And yet. We covered that a week or two ago. I don't remember the numbers here, but it is quite a bit more. Although theirs are still... Oh, here we go. So uh, this is going to be your penalty. Three times the value of any benefit obtained through the misuse of the information. So which, it's whichever is greater among these things. I mean, couldn't you argue that companies like Facebook are misusing the data already and then that's just their net value? You might. <laughs> you might get some free money with that argument. And Singapore is not messing around because they, I guess their people were hit pretty hard by the crypto thing. They were, they were hard into it. Lost a lot of money. And they're saying uh, our citizens are far too stupid to be trusted with this. <laughs> Singapore may soon require retail investors to take a test before trading crypto and prohibit credit cards. From buying crypto. That's a poorly worded headline. Mm. In other words, don't invest money that you don't actually have, which is always good advice. I would like and to, yet. I would like to see the same sort of thing with just credit cards in general. Because if your credit card has an interest rate of 16%, that should only be used in the most dire of emergencies. I'll take it one further. I, I think now that we're experiencing the, you know, the financial collapse, let's go ahead and get rid of leverage speculation. Mm. We, why would we need that? <laughs> that seems like it's led to a number of bad things lately, <laughs> more recently than, than in the past. Yeah, the worst of which being the consolidation of power at the top that's crushing us with its boot. <laughs> and India is following the same thing that the Euros did and getting themselves a nice little payment because they know that Google is always going to be guilty. India finds Google yet again orders to allow a third-party payment. Now, when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is a duplicate from last week. We already covered this last week. No, this is a second fine. And in fact, TechCrunch is like, oh, yeah, remember the other one? Here's the other one. This one's different. This is payments in apps, not allowing a third-party payment processor. So it's a little bit more subtle and nuanced. And they have dictated that Google must allow that or fines are going to keep coming. And those it, are too big to ignore. It's the Apple Dutch thing all over again. Remember Apple where every week it was just. Yeah. Horrible. But that was a relatively small fine. Yeah. In comparison. Yeah. I think Apple could have done that indefinitely. <laughs> Google cannot do this indefinitely. Plus India is the biggest market for new customers for that kind of thing. So they need it. They want it. But they can't behave. This is also an update from last week. We had uh, some questionable facts on this one. They're still somewhat questionable, but I think now we can sort of see who may have been in the right. The Wire retracts reporting on Meta, citing certain discrepancies. The outlet, outlet found problems with emails it used to back up its allegations. Okay. So the accusation was they were letting a politician just get, take things down. On Instagram, this yeah. Is, this is in India. Right. And then the paper was like, their paper reported that. And then the politician was like, no, I have nothing to do with that. And you have to retract that. And so now that they have, because the emails, they claim they, they were the smoking gun. Something was weird with them. Hmm. They use way too many exclamation points. Still a bizarre story. It seems like censorship has won here. Although it might've just been yellow journalism parading as censorship. Oh yeah. I still think it's a little murky myself, but. It definitely is. And Japan, well, you don't hear too much about Japan's uh, dystopian overlord stuff, but it's there. Japan steps up push to get public buy-in to digital IDs. People, I would think that would be pretty easy in Japan, considering how ubiquitous the train system is there. But they are pushing back against it hard because the thing about it is they've already got a system like that, kind of like our social security system. Yeah. But they also have socialized health care. So that's how you get health care which is what they're using to as a cudgel to beat people into this. Mm. So they're saying if you don't upgrade your digital ID, you won't be able to get your socialized health care. Well, they kind of did that with us too, with our licenses to fly. Yeah, You had to have mm. the digital one. It's a smaller step, but certainly yeah. a step in the same direction. And there's a lot of good arguments against this. And the Japanese people, the quotes in this article, they made them very succinctly and, you know, poetically in some cases. And the response for the government was, look, you just have to do it. 
<laughs> like that's literally, I, I can't remember if that's the exact quote, but I'm not paraphrasing very much right there. He basically said, oh yeah, here it is. You, you just, just have to do it. <laughs> Great. Thanks. That's that's the explanation from the government. Hmm. I remember when they told me that about something else a couple years ago. If I we don't have it. this, we can't go to the social credit score system. Oh, wait, you're not supposed to know that. Oh, this is a hot dose of dystopia for the week. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Krista, I feel like every time I say this word, you should say it in your style right afterwards. So we have the, the line city of Neom. Neom. <laughs> and that's it's a real thing. It's still coming. They Which assure us. Construction has started. It is still coming. After and they, they persecuted the tribes that live in the direction of the... The well, line. You know, we knew that had to happen, right? Uh, they were sentenced to death. We're making an omelet, Krista. <laughs> uh, anyway, they are giving us more details, and it just gets more and more sci-fi. Flying taxis, robotic avatars, and holograms. Saudi Arabia pushes ahead with its sci-fi city vision. What you can do is you can wear your Facebook Meta headset, and your robot avatar can go outside for you, so you never have to leave the pod. Doesn't that sound exciting? I love... This this article feels like a fluff piece, but my favorite line in it was talking about how they were trying to attract like top tier talent. I was like, oh, is that like architects and stuff? And it was like, no, CEOs. Hmm. And they're paying like millions and billions of dollars for CEOs. And it's like, whoa. Now they did tell us some new information about Neom. Yeah. And it, it turns out it's going to be three different things, not just the Lion City. The Lion City is going to be there, but also there's going to be a mega factory floating in the water. Hmm. And... There's going to be the uh, sporting facility, which we learned about previously, because they're going to do those yeah, winter, winter games. games there. Yeah, the, the floating city thing that reminds me of the, there's an Arrested Development joke, where the the girl draws the the floating city and crown. But it's not a city; it's a mega factory. Mm. You live totally different. You live in the line city, and then you are you know bust out like well, yeah. Well, there, there's no cars or anything yeah. like that, so it's going to be some automatic form of transportation to take you to your factory job. For 18 hours Ugh. and then you come back <laughs> to your pod the, the sidebar on that article it had like related stuff and one of them was like uh people from saudi arabia are really adjusting to their new work week and i was like oh are they doing a four day and it was like no it's monday to friday mm. oh they took important. saturday out yeah they finally have weekends now and now we move to social media and you all know well i guess the biggest social media story is not this one this was the biggest until just yeah. yesterday. Meta shares plunge 24% to the lowest price since 2016. Just like that, $700 million gone. Ooh. Ooh. Yikes. And a lot of people are saying that this is squarely on the shoulders of one man <laughs> who doggedly pursues this metaverse thing at the risk of everything else. And some people who have some dogs in this fight are saying it. CNBC has the headline, Meta shareholder writes critical open letter saying the company needs to slash headcount and stop spending so much money on the metaverse. If they were to stop, if Zuckerberg came out tomorrow and was like, okay, the metaverse is gone, I'm done with it. It was a bad idea. I'm going to focus all my efforts onto Facebook. Do you think they can turn it around at this point? Um, Facebook sure. is dead, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, We covered, I think it was in the episode when Facebook was worth like a trillion dollars or it was close to a trillion dollars or it was some obscene valuation. And we looked at it and we said, you know, how is this worth more than a company that makes actual widgets? Like some company that makes PVC pipe in rural Minnesota is probably worth more than what the product that Meta has. Isn't it funny that they are now actually making something? Yeah. And it's just terrible. Yeah. The, <laughs> the headsets you mean? Yeah. yeah. The thing I've been thinking about with Metaverse is like, it might be one of those things where he's going to tank the company, but he's like 20 years ahead of his time. Because think about the kids who are like in Fortnite spending their mom's money on skins and stuff. They probably would love the Metaverse eventually, but, but I, he's too early for it. But I don't think he's able to, honestly, I mean, let's face it. Epic accidentally made yeah. Fortnite. They didn't know what they were doing. Let's not forget Roblox. What's all those video games where it's like all skins and like it's a virtual world, but you spend, spend, a, lot, spend a lot of money on it. The as, spend. As much as I dislike it, PUBG <laughs> invented that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And Fortnite was just like, well, I guess we'll copy it because our game sucks. And then for some reason, I, the world accepted it. 
it's because it's, you also got construction. So there's like the Minecraft, and you remember, it's just... But I thought how, they removed that now. No, well, there's a mode that removes, but there's all kinds of different game modes. But I think, mm. not even Gen Z, but the generation after that, I think the we, metaverse might strike a chord with just because they've been raised in that kind of environment, but it'll take a long time for it to catch on. It is, can, so, can they survive that? I don't, I don't think so. But no. the other thing is, uh, the construction thing, when it was just the construction thing, it was a failure. Yeah. They had to put in the King of the Hill yeah. mechanic for it to... Well, now they have an Among Us mode, too. Like, there's all kinds of different game modes. It's it's something to do that's entertaining, but that has a component that lasts. So you feel like you're building something that you can keep with you. And that is the thing that sucks you... It will eventually suck you into the metaverse. Is you spend a bunch of time in it, and you have something that exists there that's persistent, that's yours, that you can take with you. So I get it. I mean, I get event. I could see that if you have augmented reality and you can make notes in reality that you can see if you put on an augmented reality yet, I could see how you would get dependent on that and you would need that in order to function, but we're not there yet. See the way I get around that when I want permanent messages, what I do is I store my notes in the Google assistant. Oh, <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> well, over there in Turkey, they are also unhappy with Facebook and all of its various ilk because of super profiles. Meta hit with antitrust breach in Turkey for combining user data across Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. That's not allowed because it makes it really hard for people to leave the platform. And they, also for you to get more people, like infer information from people. They did it. $18 million. Which is not a ton. What, like 10 cents a user? It's pretty affordable. Maybe they'll do it again. They'll probably do it again. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, we already did this story. No, that was Australia. That was Australia. So now the other royal colony, who is completely controlled, has to do the same thing. Facebook warns it could block news in Canada over, over proposed legislation. This is Canada's Online News Act to make sure that news publishers get paid for their content. So it's the same old thing. Facebook says, we're out. If we have to play that, we're out. But in Australia, they backed down. Yeah. I mean, they negotiated. They got some, they clawed back some stuff, but still. But then wasn't it like two quarters ago they said, we're just not going to pay that anymore? Maybe. Or was that the, that was the Google version of the same. Whatever happened, the right people we're satisfied, but nothing good for the people happened, I think is ultimately the truth. And Ars Technica tried out the Quest Pro. Turns out everybody can if there's a Best Buy near you, but uh, maybe uh, probably not going to have to stand in line. We were not wowed by our first Meta Quest Pro experience. The Best Buy demo doesn't put Meta's best foot forward. Let me summarize this article. 90% of it is him complaining that the the whole display was not as cool as he thought it should be. Yeah. This guy was definitely, <laughs> yeah. you know, he was, he was ready to, to write a hype piece. Yeah. But they didn't give him even enough for a hype piece. He was like, I couldn't find, it was just tucked away in the back of the store. There was no signage for it. And then there was no line and there was just a single employee there and they hadn't charged it all the way. And I was like, well, that's not Meta's fault. They have a lot of faults, but that's not theirs. Well, he also said it sucked. <laughs> yeah. He said, it, he said it was fine. He was like, it's not really an, a big step up from the old one. I would also point out that usually a company like Meta, they'll send one of these to somebody like Ars Technica ahead of time. Like, here you go. It's crazy, yeah, that they had to go to Best Buy to go well, try it out like a pleb. Well, I think that the reason they didn't do that is because they sort of figured that everybody would look at it and say, this isn't very good. This is an incremental change at best. Yeah, yeah. He, he was also trying to play games because when you think of the metaverse, it's kind of yeah. a big game, right? And the guy, the Best Buy guy was like, I think there's one on there, but it's not really for that. So It's supposed to be for business usage is what they said. Business in the metaverse, like that seems to be the latest push, right? And that seems like the least likely way anybody would ever want to use that. We're we're webcam. You know, we don't even put on a webcam. If someone was like, you want to hop in the metaverse for this? I'd be like, no, it's okay. Well, I mean, the metaverse isn't going to be a camera, right? You can look like whatever you want in the metaverse. It's just, I, whenever somebody's like, oh, can we hop on a Teams call real quick? I'm like, oh, God, because I got to install my microphone. Yeah. And put the headphones Imagine, yeah, on having it. to do the whole headset and like. And it's not charged. Yeah. But the metaverse must continue 
And uh, did you guys, after reading this article, I was not able to ever work out how do you actually get to this? Yeah, no. What technology uh, is this? Uh, no, nothing at all from Decrypt. Interpol launches its first ever metaverse designed for global law enforcement. So I guess you can go to Interpol in the metaverse and report a crime happened in the metaverse. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, the only way it's been used so far was a simulated travel checkpoint where you could shake people down. Because we need more training on that, obviously. Why would we need that in the metaverse? No, they're training them to do it IRL. Oh. It's job training. Here's how you crush people's rights. A okay. primer. And then like the little training dummy, it's like, oh, no, no, look, they're, they still have 10% sliver of happiness going through this airport. <laughs> we need to crush that down a little bit more so not even a Cinnabon can make that better. I'm seeing one pixel of free will over there. <laughs> It's a mod for uh, papers, please. No. Oh. <laughs> this one is amazing because this is, I mean, it's not, but it could be just a copy paste from what we've already seen yeah. from Facebook and Instagram. It's the uh. same story, it's the same kind of people doing the same kind of horrible things. <laughs> Time Magazine, a little behind here. It's like, uh, it says, behind TikTok's boom, a legion of traumatized $10 a day content moderators. Turns out Facebook had this exact same problem. What was Facebook's solution? Uh, they never arrived at one. I think they put like a, you know, a D student psychologist yeah. in the buildings and up, and they outsourced everything. So it's not Facebook employees, nor is it TikTok employees. And they're not even in the countries where TikTok is usually operating. This was in, uh, was it Brazil, I think? Colombia. Ugh. So you're making ten dollars a day in Colombia, watching murder and child exploitation and all the worst stuff. Yeah. Still out there. And TikTok is still fighting that nasty rumor that it might be sending all the data back to China. TikTok strongly denies reports that its Chinese parent planned to use the app to track locations of individual U.S. citizens. This would actually be more work for them not to do that than to do that because of the way that our mobile phones are architected. Also, if China's using double agents to try and steal Huawei documents, yeah, absolutely. of course they're going to try to do everything that they can with TikTok. And they have a lot of control over their companies. So. Maybe they're strongly denying it because it's using the past tense in this headline. Planned. They're actually planning. Currently I mean, planning. I mean, the BS nonsense fly, uh, flashlight apps that you can still download track your location. So third-party libraries. It's like, I found this great free library to do X as an application developer. It could be tracking your user's location without you, the developer, even really realizing it. That's why that library was free. So this seems uh, like a stretch. I think that's probably going to be abused as a plausible deniability tool in yeah. the future, which is sad. Yeah. But, I mean, on one hand, you should be responsible for your supply chain. On the other hand, knowing what that would require for projects, modern projects... It's not realistic. It, it's it's the same thing that, that we always talk about, which is if Google wanted to solve this problem, it would give you tools for treating applications as adversaries. But Google's in on this. Google wants to work with people in order to um, to provide this kind of functionality. And until Google helps you build adversarial tools where you can lie to these applications about your location, it's not going to get worse. I mean, better. <laughs> no, I think it's absolutely going to get worse. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> going to get worse. Going to get worse. Yeah. Not going to get better. And of course, we've learned about the uh, the Kia boys and all of the various challenges that have come over time. We had the hot water. We had the cinnamon. We had the cinnamon was YouTube, I think. But... Um, what were some of the big ones? The milk crate. TikTok's just pre prepping us for the state secrets challenge. <laughs> so, I think this was a while back. And yeah, I kind of agree with this. I mean, how can you expect TikTok to police? What about the, the capital insurrection challenge? The, the stupidity. You just got to demonetize. demonetize yeah. That. TikTok immune from lawsuit over girl's death from blackout challenge, according to judge. This is this is a Reuters article. It's like, yeah, it's. I would. This is the right ruling. This makes sense. I mean, it's sad that the girl died, but also kind of what did you expect? No, I expected that to happen. Uh -huh. When I heard about the blackout challenge, I was like, oh, somebody's going to die. And maybe that might not be the worst thing. Uh -huh. Is that is that the F-A-F-O acronym? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're already demonetized. You can just say it. Oh, no, it's fine. 
You think, at, well, I don't know, like as she was losing consciousness, did she find out? She did. But did she realize that she was finding out? There's no way for us to know. <laughs> <laughs> we need some sort of, uh, you know, contact with the afterlife so we can ask these burning questions. <laughs> did they run into Houdini? Houdini was supposed to let us know. He didn't. And uh, I suppose that the young folk love emojis and avatars and when you go in the metaverse you're gonna have to have that maybe i don't know this makes no sense to me that this number would be on this software yeah it just it staggers the mind google acquires twitter back to ai avatar startup for a hundred million dollars i find this strange because you know what per, do they have per musk's description of what he wants twitter to be i would think he would want to keep this Maybe that's why Twitter sold it before he got hold of it. Yeah, I don't think he would have any say in that. Yeah. But it says Twitter backed. I don't know if Twitter owned it. Oh, okay. It Maybe was, they just one invested venture, in it. Yeah. yeah. One of those venture capital investment things. The answer to what they do is it seems like they let you choose from various... It's basically a character creator from a video game. Yeah. It's your metaverse creator. Can you export it to the metaverse, though? I don't know if that's true or not. Not yet, but Wait. they're building it, I'm sure. Can you imagine in the next Fallout, though, when all these these cool AI tools are in, imported into a video game? I want to go in the Fallout character creator and describe my character's backstory, at least some of it, and then have that fed into the AI to create the character. And it's like, my Fallout character was a, you know, a grizzled maintenance shaft worker. And they'll, like, reference it in some of the dialogue from yeah. time to time. Yeah, that would be who cool. kept the bunker you know, alive, but has a, a horrible facial scar from a steam pipe that exploded when he was working in the vent pipes as a teenager. And, and he's been a little bit of an outcast ever since then. And then it, you know, builds the avatar and the backstory and all the other stuff. And you could just imagine that in your own mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I must not use my imagination. Right? Could just create the character. And, <laughs> I think Amazon's making a fallout show too. Yeah. yeah. You mm. could, you could record a video. You could stream that on Twitch and let people enjoy it. <laughs> All better solutions than what you just described. Yeah. You know, that is the most fun part of RimWorld is that the, whatever. The, the little, story simulator. Yeah. The very toy level thing that they have in that is cool. And also like NetHack. That was a surprisingly fun aspect of, of uh, NetHack is that you get those little kind of character backstories when depending on your character class and their little side quests and stuff. And this has got to be the story of the week. Uh, We've all been waiting for it. For once, he didn't wait till Friday. Twitter is now an Elon Musk company. I was like, wow, what a, what a good friend of ours <laughs> to actually release it before we record the news on a Friday. Well, it was the court that made the decision. Uh, right, I think. He, uh, did you see the picture of him with the sink? I didn't understand the sink. What, what was that joke? The, the joke was literally, I'm now in charge of Twitter HQ. Let that sink in. Oh, sink. Ugh. I thought it was like kitchen sink. No, like we're I'm bringing that. No, no he's I, I was thinking more like circling the drain, but he's literally <laughs> let that sink that I'm carrying in. God, he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he has now fired the top brass for sure. They all had massive golden parachutes. Don't worry about them. <laughs> and I believe the uh, the rank and file layoffs. I, I didn't see a headline, but I saw a red bar earlier as we were just looking at those. <laughs> the one lady. Uh, the one of the it was like the social policy something executive very you know lower tier I gather um, was said something to the effect of you know I'm really excited for this this is you know I'm, I'm really glad whatever 11 million dollar parachute and it's like oh yeah, that yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. she was basically like the censorer yeah the censorer in chief they didn't call her that but he, that's what she was he tweeted like a big thing that was like you know, I don't want this to be completely unhinged, you know, but I want it to be a freer platform. I'm like, oh, sweet baby. He has no idea what it's like to moderate an online community. It's going to be so fun to watch his headaches. And <laughs> his, his descent into madness as he starts having to moderate Twitter threads. His petulant reactions, like knee jerk reactions that will completely be over the top and cause the problem to be worse. I'm really looking forward to the, the next season of Twitter. It's going to be exciting. Assuming we make it that far. But let's hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, that's an unusual day that we did social on Monday. So, or yeah. Tuesday, I'm sorry. And so on Wednesday, it will be business and security. Woo! We'll see you guys then.